well. Now that you've got your batteries, you're going to want some battery cables. In front of me, I've got a couple of examples here. Uh, two of these came from a junkyard and two are something that I made. Uh, a main characteristic that you want to keep in mind with battery cables is gauge. And gauge is essentially what diameter the cable is. Now something that's counterintuitive about this though is that a larger gauge number means a smaller wire. 22 gauge is a pretty small wire, but one gauge is about the size of my little finger. Now in the examples I have in front of me here, we have a two gauge cable. This is pulled off of a forklift. It has a, a flat lug at the end of it and already has some uh, non-conductive non -conductive shrink wrap tubing on it. A little bit bigger is a one gauge battery cable, also just stripped off of a forklift. Has a simple side lug on there, doesn't have any uh, heat shrink on it or anything. Now these two red cables are made out of welding cable. This is two aught gauge. Uh, once gauge gets down to zero, it starts going the other direction, but it, it'll be a number, a slash, and another zero, which we'd call one aught, two aught, three aught. Uh, so two aught's a pretty good thick cable here. Uh, this came from a friend of mine who works in construction, and a guy he works with has a, a welder, and he was going to be scrapping out the cable, and so instead the friend gave it to me, which is great because this stuff is a good couple of dollars per foot. Now on the end of it, I went to the hardware store and I got a lug. Basically all you do is you trim off a short section of the insulation off the end, slide the lug on, and then you crimp it in place with a large crimping tool that looks a little bit like a bolt cutter. Uh, actually at my local hardware store, they had one available for rent, so I paid for the minimum time and crimped up a bunch of cables all during that rental period. Uh, after crimping the lug on, you simply want to put some shrink wrap over the top of that, which looks like this. Uh, it's kind of nice to color code. Uh, if you happen to have two different size lugs, if it's a different size for the positive and negative of the battery, it's good to color code positive red and negative with black. Uh, in this case, uh, this was for a positive connection, so uh, I've got just a little bit of red on there to indicate that. Now this is a different style of connector. This one simply slides on and then you tighten it down with a set screw. Uh, this is not my favorite type of connector. Uh, it's real bulky, it's hard to get quite exactly the way you want it on a battery. Uh, but a friend of mine had a big box of these, so he said, here, take as many as you need. So it was a good way for me to cut down on costs. However, the shrink tube will not make it over there, which means you have to use some sort of a specialty battery cover or electrical tape or something like that. It's really not the best way to go. Now some of the wiring in my car is still just stock original forklift cables. I was able to go to a junkyard and get uh, pretty much as many miscellaneous forklift parts as I wanted just because uh, a friend of a friend ran uh, the salvage yard. Now if you can get some uh, you want to get the heaviest duty ones that you can, a nice solid lug on the end and already with the shrink wrap on there. Uh, some of the cables in my car are not quite the right length, but that's the length that they were when they came off of a forklift, and I didn't have to do any cutting, putting new connectors on there, anything like that. Some of the other cables in my car were all made from this 2 aught welding cable with the lug added on, crimped, and shrink wrapped. Those are some very nice cables. Uh, I do still have a few spots in my car where I have this style of uh, tightened down connection, which I still plan on replacing with some nice looking finished off cables. One more thing you want to keep in mind is the size of the hole in the lug versus the bolt connection that's on your battery. All my batteries happen to have a sort of a bolt that comes straight up, the lug goes on there and then you tighten it down with a nut. Now you want this lug to be directly onto the battery connection itself. You don't want to have a washer in between the two, anything like that. And you want to make sure that your connection is nice and clean. So always use uh, something to clean it. I like these little Brillo scrubby pads. Uh, they're a plastic, but they're abrasive. So you just polish that up a little bit. You get a nice clean connection. Uh, you dust off the plastic and you're ready to go. But if you put a lug on that has too big of a hole straight onto that uh, bolt and you tighten it down, you can actually pull lead up through the hole. So you wanna make sure that you're using the right size lug, right size hole in that lug. 
And of course, when you're all finished with your project, you want to make sure that all your battery posts are covered with some sort of a non-conductive cover, whether that's uh, snap-on plastic, rubber, or something along those lines. Uh, electrical tape will be your bare minimum, but it's going to look much nicer with some sort of a battery boot to cover it. So where are we going to put all these batteries? Remember earlier we said that size was one of the considerations in a vehicle that you're looking for. Now I went with a little bit smaller car, so where those batteries go exactly is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Now since it's a hatchback, it has a cargo area right back here. So that was sort of the logical first place to start with for just an area to put the batteries. Now my first battery rack was real simple. I just got two pieces of old bed frame, which were getting thrown out on large garbage pickup day. I cut them to the right length to run across the back of the car in the cargo area here. Then I drilled a couple of holes in the ends with those holes going through a nice solid point in the body, um, you know, something where a bolt can go through nice and easy use a couple of washers and a locking nut, and then this frame is bolted down to the car and it's not going anywhere. You put the batteries in the frame. Of course, you measured for the length of the batteries first. You set the batteries in there, put another piece of metal across the top of the batteries to hold them all down, tighten that down with some threaded rod or long bolts, and your batteries are not going anywhere. On the other hand, that was taking up all my cargo space, and what was kind of cool to show off the batteries, you know, I'd, I'd really like to have that trunk space, and I also thought it'd be kind of cool to keep the car as original looking as possible. So later on, I designed a battery box. Now what's neat about a battery box is it keeps all of your batteries contained together, keeps everything else out of there. With this cargo area in the back, um, it'd be real easy for me to drop something down there. It could kind of get lost down sort of behind the batteries. Could be problems. So if you put all your batteries together in a box, it contains them, it keeps everything else out, and it keeps it looking very, very nice. This is my back seat. Well, it formerly was. Now it's actually the battery box and the battery box protective cover. I still have the original seat back here, which is mostly just used to divide the passenger from the cargo compartment. Uh, this folds and it's removable, so if I want to use this whole area back here for cargo, I can still do that. Now, I also removed the back seat seat belts. The way the battery box ended up, the seat belts just didn't work real well. This sits a little higher, so it's not real comfortable for passengers. And the way that I use my car is typically me driving by myself, or me and my wife, or me and my wife and a bunch of cargo. So I didn't need the back seats here. I still do have the seat belt anchor points, and if I wanted to, I would be able to reinstall those. If we take a look at the cover here, all this is is a piece of three quarter inch plywood, which I cut to size, and then I uh, wrapped it with some very inexpensive, 100% recycled uh, car carpeting. And this just slides right out. Now underneath it, you can see I've got five out of the six batteries in the car. Uh, the cabling doesn't look as clean as it possibly could because a lot of these cables are just those reused forklift cables from the junkyard, and I didn't alter the length of those at all. Um, ideally, I could shorten these by a little bit to clean up the cabling, and it would actually be a little bit better for voltage. Short cables are better. The battery box itself is a steel equipment case that a friend of mine had sitting around in his junk pile. It was pretty close to the right size, but we still had to cut it down a little bit to make it fit appropriately. First, I cut a hole under the back seat. Now keep in mind this is just above where the gas tank used to be. So since we already removed the gas tank, there was nothing under here. Still, measure twice, cut once. You wouldn't want to cut through anything important like, say, brake lines, for example. After cutting the hole, we cleaned it up. We put the metal box down in there, and my friend Rich helped me weld that in place. Once the welding was done, I put a little paint over the welds. In this case, I happened to have some blue spray paint around, so that's what I used. There were also a few little spots where there was uh, still a bit of a hole left from 
uh, cutting, plasma cutting, and welding. So I used some caulk to caulk up any of those holes, in this case kind of a, a tan urethane caulk, which is just whatever I happen to have around. And also the uh, cut line of the box itself uh, also got painted with, uh, this was uh, just a beige paint that I happen to have around. You'll also see here that I've got three quarters of an inch of pink extruded polystyrene foam insulation all the way around the edge of the box. I also have it under the box as well. This is to keep the batteries warm in the winter. When batteries are cold, they don't perform as well. But if you keep them nice and warm with a little insulation, they'll be much, much happier. The insulation also takes up the extra space around the edges of the box so that the batteries friction fit in there uh, nice and comfy. Uh, the batteries don't even have a top strap holding them down. They just simply can't go anywhere. They're wedged in there nice and tight. For the battery cables connecting the batteries in the box back here, I made these out of some of that salvaged arc welding cable. So I simply measured them, cut them to size, put uh, an appropriate size lug on either end, crimped it, put the shrink wrap on there, and then added a battery cover terminal. So even though these batteries have a standard automotive post and they have a threaded post, you can see both of those are covered so there, there is no accidental short circuits by, say, dropping a wrench across them. Since the battery box is in the back of the car, and the sixth battery and the motor are in the front of the car, we need some way to connect those two areas with power cables. Two of them, one for going out, one for coming back for circuit. Now we could run those power cables either inside the car or outside the car. I chose to run them outside the car because to do it on the inside of the car, I'd have to pull up all the carpet. I didn't see a really good spot for it. I'd have to run all that through the firewall. Could be kind of a pain. But on the other hand, it would protect the cables from uh, bad weather, road debris, any, any of those sorts of things. But what I did is since we took the exhaust system off the car, that left that nice channel straight down the middle of the car where that exhaust pipe would have been. I got some two inch plastic pipe, essentially conduit, and put that up in the bottom of the car, held it in there with a couple of clamps that are designed to do that. And I ran those power cables through that conduit from the battery box up to the front. So the battery box itself actually has a hole drilled in it with a hole saw, which took forever. Uh, but the conduit goes straight into there and it's caulked in place. That way the power cables have a, a nice place to go. They're protected from the weather, the elements, it's waterproof, don't have to worry about road debris or anything like that. Now besides the power cables for the batteries running through there, I have a couple of other cables going through there as well. Basically just a couple of pieces of extension cord. Extension cord is kind of nice because it's designed for electricity to run through it and it has a couple of conductors inside already. I use those for the battery charger and a couple other purposes. Just to give you a better view of the battery box, I'm going to remove the back seat. So without the seat in the way, you can see uh, it really is just a, a big battery box. It's welded in place, it's not going anywhere. It's very, very solid. It does also have a notch cut out right here, which allows for some cables to go into the spare tire area where I have the charger. The conduit tube to the front of the car is up here, hidden behind this battery. And here you can see the plywood is just to cover uh, something a little bit more solid than the original sort of cardboard or hardboard material that was uh, the back cover in the car. When the battery cover is properly reinstalled, it doesn't sit on the batteries or any of the battery cables. Instead, it sits directly on the edges of the battery box. You can then use some bolts or some sort of a quick release to properly mount down the battery cover.